Welcome back to another episode of the College Neuro Network, a podcast series part of Simply Neuroscience's The Synapse. My name is Anamika. And my name is Lena, and we're your hosts for today. The College Neuro Network has discussions with undergraduate students and professors in order to gain insight into the neuroscience departments of and opportunities within the nation's top universities. Today's episode is focused on Brown University a world-renowned Ivy League research university in Providence, Rhode Island that emphasizes the opportunity it provides students to design their own academic journeys. With its signature open curriculum, collaborative atmosphere, and commitment to the undergraduate experience, Brown ranks number 14 in the national universities by the U.S. News and World Report. Joining us is Sarah Park, an undergraduate at Brown University. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today to discuss your experiences at Brown as a student studying neuroscience. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. (laughs) So to begin, could you please briefly introduce yourself and maybe tell us a little bit about what sparked your interest in neuroscience as well as your interest in other fields? Yeah, of course. So hi, guys. <laughs> uh, my name is Sarah, and I am a rising senior at Brown University studying neuroscience and public health. On campus, I'm involved in a couple of different clubs, including Care Clinic, which is like a portable clinic that goes to underserved areas of Providence in hopes of delivering free basic medical care. And I'm also part of like 180 Degrees Consulting, which is like a nonprofit consulting group, and Project Sunshine, which goes to hospitals and we engage in like a variety of different activities with the children. I have also done a couple of different research projects from pathology research to neuroscience clinical research and cardiology research. So yeah, and if you haven't, I mean, I guess it's kind of obvious, but I am a pre-med student. So if you guys have any questions about that, um, I'd be happy to answer them as well. Oh, yeah. And I think you also asked, you know, what sparked my interest in neuroscience. So I actually applied to Brown University as a philosophy major because I was really interested in bioethics and I really liked thinking about more abstract philosophical problems. So, yeah, I applied to Brown as a philosophy major, but I think taking my first class at Brown, which was Introduction to Neuroscience, definitely sparked my interest in the field. Like most students, I didn't really have much of a background or exposure to neuroscience before college. So I guess that class was definitely the first time I like, it was like a really eye-opening experience because it was the first time I got to learn about the brain and, you know, different neurological disorders and the synapse. But it was really interesting to me and I thought it was really fascinating to learn about the organ that has kind of like the power to control your entire body and your mind and I really enjoyed it, so I guess that's kind of what led me to study neuroscience. Yeah, that's great. So we were wondering what factors drew you the most to studying at Brown? Mm, to Brown University in particular. Mm-hmm. So I actually didn't, like, Brown wasn't even on my college list when I was um, deciding on, like, which places to apply. Someone actually suggested it, and they were like, oh, I think Brown University would actually be a really good fit for you. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Brown. So I started doing my research on Brown and I really liked three particular things about it. I think the first is obviously the open curriculum. And I think that's what most people write for their Y Brown essay. It's like they write that, you know, the open curriculum gives them so much freedom to study whatever they want to do and just like kind of explore since, you know, in college you don't really, you're not like a hundred percent sure on like what you want to do with your life. And I think the open curriculum is actually really nice because for me, I guess I didn't really take advantage of it as much as I wanted to, but from the classes I did take and that weren't in my like requirements for like pre med or neuroscience, I did learn a lot. Like for example, I took a visual a visual arts class hosted by a RISD professor, which is like very close to Brown. And I also took a number of like philosophy classes and I genuinely think I learned a lot more from those classes that like weren't directly in my concentration requirements and I got to meet a lot of interesting people that I wouldn't have necessarily met in different classes and the second reason I applied to Brown was because of the reputation and the environment. I guess Brown is known as like the chill, happy ID and I really like that because I think I have a tendency to become very competitive but being around more competitive people I think kind of draws that out in me more so being around like really like supportive people who are really just there to help you and like they want to see you succeed, whether that be like professors or friends, um, that like really supportive and non competitive environment I think was really good for me. And the last reason was more because I like the campus a lot too. It was just like a really pretty campus and that's like kinda of closed off and I do think location should be a pretty big factor when you're like deciding on where to apply to college and 
yeah, I just really liked the campus itself, and I thought it was very charming. So all of those factors came apart. Yeah, all of those things sound amazing. So obviously to study neuroscience at Brown is an amazing opportunity, but what do you think makes Brown's neuroscience department different from other universities? Hmm, this is like kind of a harder question because I think generally what you learn at different colleges is pretty much like similar. The curriculum is very similar. You know, what you learn at Brown's Intro to Neuroscience class is probably very similar to what you learn at like, I don't know, Cornell's Neuroscience class. But I think it's definitely the professors that kind of make a difference. One thing like I think most students don't know is that a lot of the professors are hired to do research and not to necessarily teach. But I think the professors at Brown are really, really good at teaching too. Um, even though that's not like exactly like why they were hired. I think they do a really good job at like explaining the material and like being accessible for students. And also like the TAs are also very, very helpful and accessible. And I think neuroscience is like a very solid concentration to be in at Brown. And so this, you kind of talked about this already, so it doesn't have to be a super detailed answer. But how did you make use of Brown's open curriculum? And how do you think the policy impacted your study of neuroscience? Mm. So I think I used to think that the STEM um, field and the communities field were very really, like starkly contrasting each other. But I think taking more classes that were outside of like my own field of study, like for example, I mentioned um, visual arts and like philosophy, kind of really changed my perspective on that. Because as I was taking those classes, I think I began to realize that the central themes are very much parallel across like all fields of academia, and it's like very much interconnected. And it's not like you know separate entities, but rather it's like all under a comprehensive umbrella of academia. And I think that's like one thing that I did realize that I couldn't have realized if I didn't take those classes that were outside of my own field. And it really did broaden my perspective. And also, I think it was just like a really cool opportunity to like meet new people, like I mentioned before. So yeah, I think the open curriculum is great. I just wish I kind of took more advantage of it. It was just unfortunate because the pre-med curriculum and also double concentrating, I had a lot of requirements because of that. But if it wasn't for that, I would have definitely taken advantage of it and taken like econ and, you know, um, computer science. I think that's like one of my biggest regrets, like not taking advantage of it more. It definitely sounds like a really great policy. So branching off of that, what has been your favorite class as a neuroscience major and why? I would have to say it's the Introduction to Neuroscience class. It's co-taught by Professor Stein and Professor Paradiso. I think it was kind of an eye-opening experience because I had never had any exposure to neuroscience before and it was the first time learning about it. And I just thought, first of all, the content itself was super interesting. Like you learn about the synapse and like, neurological disorders and it's like various parts of how like the brain is like connected to the rest of your body and like all the pathways and stuff and it was definitely not an easy intro class it was a lot of work but I really liked that it was like you get what you put in whereas like I feel like orgo for me like I it was like really hard to like get as much as I put in and I felt like sometimes like it wasn't like an accurate um, correlation but I think like for a lot of neuroscience classes it is very much like you get what you put in and the amount of effort you put into those classes, and you definitely get out of it. And so, yeah, I just really, really liked the intro to neuroscience class, and I would recommend if anybody does apply to Brown and, you know, ends up going, you should definitely take it, even if it's, like, not in your direct field computation, because I think it's a really good class. Mm-hmm. So building off of that, did you have a favorite professor, and how accessible would you say are the professors at Brown? Yeah, so I think I mentioned the professor who co-taught in City Neuroscience, Professor Sign, also teaches another class, Principles of Physiology, and it's like kind of like all about the human body. And those two were like two of my favorite classes at Brown, so I would have to say Professor Sign is my favorite professor. I think it's also the fact that his teaching style was very much fit for me, and it was like very straightforward, and like the tests were very straightforward, and like a good accurate representation of like what we were expected to learn in class and he was also really funny too (laughs) but yeah I think a lot of students also really like professor Dr. Monica Linden because she is a really really great professor and I would just say that the class that she teaches so there's like an intro sequence at Brown so there's intro to neuroscience first we take that in the fall and then most people usually move on to the second um, course which is neurobiology offered in the spring, and then there's neural systems, which is the third um, the core neuroscience course, and Dr. Linden teaches neural systems, and that's, like, infamous for being, like, 
one of the most hardest neuroscience classes at Brown, and I definitely struggled with it. Like, I had a, I think it was, like, the first midterm, I kind of had, like, a mid-breakdown, because I just, like, completely blanked out in the middle of the exam, and, like, I had, like, only, like, 15 minutes left, and I wasn't even, like, halfway through, but that was a really difficult class, but also really rewarding, and a lot of people really, really liked Dr. Linden, even though her class was very challenging, because she's such a great professor. Yeah, she's not personally my favorite person, but a lot of people do, um, like her. Yeah, and then I think you also asked, um, how accessible are the professors? Um, I would say in general, it really does depend on, like, the size of the class that you're enrolled in, so... Obviously, if it's a bigger class, it's kind of harder to have, like, one-on-one conversations with the professors, um, and usually the only way you can reach them are just, like, going to their office hours that are hosted once or twice a week, and there's usually more people in the room than, like, just you and a professor. Or if it's, like, a smaller class, you can, like, sign up, or you can email them and, like, schedule an appointment to have, like, a one-on-one um, appointment, and I think I generally usually do prefer that because it is more personal. But um, for the bigger classes, they definitely do try to make the TAs very accessible so that if the professors aren't there to help you, the TAs can, like, answer your questions. And honestly, a lot of the times the TAs can be more helpful because they are also, they've also been a student, so they, like, understand your struggles and, like, they know, like, what you're curious about. So sometimes, like, it is better to, like, go to TA office hours than it is professors than it is to go to, like, professor office hours. Yeah, all of the professors sound really great. Um, how demanding is studying neuroscience at Brown? And what did your daily schedule look like as a neuroscience major? And was it easy to balance your extracurriculars and also hanging out with friends? Yeah, so I would say neuroscience is as demanding as any other major is. It's not like any more difficult or any less difficult. I think any field of study requires a lot of time and effort to be good at. But I would say, like, in general, it's pretty good if you are already pre-med student because a lot of the pre-med requirements and neuroscience requirements overlap. So you do need to take orgo and, like, physics and things like that, but that's also included in the neuroscience conversation. So it's kind of, like, good if you're a pre-med student, but I think if you're not, it can be a little bit more challenging and demanding because you're taking these, like, upper-level courses, which is why Brown also offers another concentration that's like um it's called clips or it's abbreviated and called clips stands for like cognitive linguistic psychological sciences i believe and basically that's kind of more like neuroscience slash psychology whereas like neuroscience is more like neuroscience and biology so for the students who are like more interested in the psychology aspect of neuroscience can also do that um without having to take orgo and physics which is honestly great (laughs) so um yeah that is also an option. My daily schedule, I think it's pretty much similar to a lot of other college students. You take like one to two, an hour or an hour and a half long classes a day. And then like the rest of the day is kind of like all free time. So it's pretty different from high school where you're taking, you know, when you're in class from like 7.30 a.m. to like 2.30 p.m. You generally do have a lot more downtime as a neuroscience major slash college student. So it's really all about time management once you get to college because no one's like forcing you to study. And yeah, so I think I personally had enough time to balance extracurriculars, um, and like socializing with friends. I think it's only just hard like during final season or like when you have a week like full of midterms. That's usually when like, you know, I wouldn't leave the library and I would just like grind, <laughs> um, continuously. But other than those hefty weeks, I think I generally had enough time to get balance everything. Yeah, not too bad. So you mentioned that you had the opportunity to conduct neuroscience research while at Brown. So could you elaborate more on like what specifically you researched and what was the process to obtain that research? Yeah, so um, I guess this is a little bit different from what most people think of neuroscience patients because I think most people think of like bench work or like when you're working in a lab, like pipetting and things like that. But um, I did clinical research, so... Um, I worked at a consulting firm in Massachusetts, and what I basically did was, like, I was conducting literature reviews and then analyses on opioid-induced hyperalgesia, which is a side, um, like, condition arising from prolonged opioid use in which, like, the patient becomes more, like, paradoxically more sensitive to painful stimuli, where, like, opioids are supposed to kind of, like, numb it. So um, I was researching that, and for those of you who don't know what, like, a literature review is, it's, like, basically you're reading up on, like, all of the published literature on um, 
a specific topic, then you're kind of summarizing it into like one um, comprehensive document. And so that's basically what I was doing. I really liked what I was doing because it was very directly related to the opioid litigation case that was going on in the moment. So I was working with like lawyers and physicians and expert witnesses involved in the litigation case. And I was like, it felt like my research actually had a direct impact on like people. And like, yeah, so I think that was a really, really interesting opportunity that I had. And I think the other question was like, how did I obtain the research? Um, it was just through a, a friend who was already doing the research and he thought it'd be good because they needed more help on the like neurobiological mechanism side of it because not nobody there was like a neuroscience major. So like, I guess like they wanted someone who could like kind of more understand and like explain the mechanism behind like the um, condition. So that's like why I was kind of hired. But yeah, um, it was a really, really interesting opportunity. And I would definitely recommend to anyone who's a pre-med or a neuroscience major to do research because it is very, very helpful and um, also interesting. So you mentioned pre-med, and I'm sure a lot of the people watching this will also be pre-med. So could you just kind of describe more about what it means to be pre-med while studying neuro and like what are the kinds of things you have to do because you're pre-med? Mm. So I think... Well, first of all, like what I was confused when I first entered college, like there is no pre-med major, right? There's only like a pre-med track. And what that means is like there's a list of uh, required courses that you need to take in order to apply to med school. And I think it's like general chemistry, orgo one, orgo two, biochem, two bio classes with lab, um, two semesters of physics, two semesters of math, um, like in two English courses and like, like a psychology course, I believe. Um, I don't know if that's like exactly the number of classes, but it's like generally something like that. And it's like, I think being a neuroscience major, like while being pre-med is like honestly really, really convenient because a lot of the requirements overlap, like I said before. But at the same time, I do think med schools really, really like it when an applicant is not a like bio or neuro major. Like if they're also a philosophy major or an English major, that's also just as like very, I think that's like more unique, honestly. So, like, I don't think it needs to be pressured to, like, you know, study a STEM conversation in college, but definitely, like, it would be more convenient, like, time management-wise, because you have less required courses to take for both things. This is kind of, like, a really quick question, but have you had any experience with the Kearney Institute? Because we're going to be interviewing Dr. Lipscomb in the next couple of weeks, so we were just wondering if you had any connection to that. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We were also wondering, what is your least favorite and favorite part about neuroscience at Brown? Hmm. I think the most, what I like the most about studying neuroscience at Brown is the professors, definitely. Um, they are amazing, and they are really good at teaching and like doing what they do. And also the content itself, I just find really personally fascinating. The least favorite part? Hmm. For me, honestly, it was neural systems because it was just so difficult and like I just had like a traumatic experience during the first midterm. Um, but that's like very, very strictly personal. I think if you're smarter, like you probably wouldn't struggle that much, but I was just really struggling in that class. Um, other than that, I don't think there's any downsides to studying neuroscience. It's a very, um, solid major to be at Brown because the professors are great. It's a very fair concentration. Yeah. So as our last question, we were wondering, what advice do you have to give to any high schoolers who are listening to this? Specifically, like, do you have any tips for how they can get involved in neuroscience as high schoolers? And maybe you could share, like, what you did in high school that you think prepared you for a career in STEM. I think, for me, while I didn't really have much of a neuroscience background or exposure prior to college, so I don't really have any tips on, like, like how to gain or um, exposure. I guess like watching this podcast could be a way. Um, but I think what I would want to say is like, don't like go into college only like honing in on like one concentration, thinking you're going to do that thing because it can really change. And like, I would recommend like your first year at least of college to like really explore and like take a variety of different classes. It could be neuroscience. It could be econ. It could be computer science. Um, I would just say, like, don't just, like, kind of restrict yourself to one concentration and, like, keep your mind open. And, yeah, like, college is really the time to explore. And as you get older, it's going to be harder to do that because you really need to, like, kind of hone in on one thing. So I think when you have the chance, like, your first year of college, try to explore a lot. And, or, like, I think in high school, it's, like, 
I don't know. I think I was a very like average high school student, to be honest. I had a very average SAT score. I did like all the extracurriculars that like, like you know, like the boxes that you kind of need to check off. But one thing that I think that really helped me get into Brown um, was my essays. I think. I think a lot of people underestimate the importance of writing a good essay, but those are just as important. And yeah, I I do think like yeah, it's just good to keep an open mind and explore a lot while you're in college. <laughs> we don't really have any more questions. We were going to ask, like, how do you see yourself in the future with your neuroscience degree? But you mentioned that you were pre-med, so maybe you could elaborate what aspect of medicine do you think you're going to go into? Like, would it be neurology or cardiology? Mm, yeah, so the goal right now, well, I'm currently at home like, studying for the MCAT, um, but after I do take the exam, I want to apply to med school and for the specific specialty, I think I'm still very inexperienced and I don't have enough of an exposure to a specific field to say, like, this is what I want to do. But I think that's completely okay. Um, a lot of people will change, like, what they want to do while they're in med school. It's kind of like college. So I, I'm just keeping my mind very open and not really restricting myself to any specialty. And, yeah, I think I'll just see what I like and... As I, you know, like go through med school, I'll probably gain more exposure to a lot of different faculties. So I'm just thinking about getting into med school first for now. <laughs> and I guess there's maybe another additional question. Do you have any specific advice about like the college application process? Or could you elaborate more about like essays, I guess, to help rising high school seniors who might be watching this? Mm, yeah, I think one thing that I really wish I knew um when I was applying to college and deciding on where to go, was that, like, prestige is not as important as a lot of people think it is. I think when you're a high school senior, you know, everyone's getting their decisions back, and, like, you want to post on Instagram in your bio, like, you know, Brown 2021 or, like, Columbia 2023. Like, I think it feels like that when you go to college and the name of the college is, like, very, very important. But once you go off to college, I think nobody really cares, and it's just a really a matter of like how well you can do at the place and how good of a fit it is for you. So yeah, and like also like financial aid, that's also really the um part of like deciding on where to go. I do think like no matter what, like no matter what college you go to, the curriculum is very, very similar. Like what you learn in a bio class at Brown is probably very similar to like what you learn in a bio class at the Unish. Um and so like I do think like it shouldn't be about the prestige or the name. Um and that should hold less of a significance in like how well you think you can succeed at that particular institution and how well you know you would fit into the environment there and um also like how well you like the city and the location of the school is also a big factor that most people miss so yeah just don't focus too much on prestige and try to look at the big pictures like kind of like what i want to say and also it's like once you go to the college you realize that like college is not as important as it is to go to grad school like grad school is like where it, like really has like the most significance so it would be much better to go to a college that you can really succeed in and then like go to a better grad school later on um, than it is vice versa so yeah I'd say just like don't focus too much on the name and just go where you think you would most thrive in yeah yeah I think that's really good advice and so that wraps up our questions for you thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us for the College Narrow Network podcast series the responses were really insightful and they'll definitely help high school students listening who are researching colleges and are interested in majoring or minoring even in neuroscience. Thank you again.